What is the data jujitsu approach? So the, the data jujitsu approach was one that we really tried to develop at LinkedIn as we were building data products. And if you think of jujitsu versus karate, jujitsu is the art of softness. It's often you have to use your opponent's energy and strength against itself. Karate is you're going at a problem straight on, trying to break it, break it, hit it hard. That probably offends some of those of you out there <laughs> that are specialists in, uh, sure. in, in the field, but in the martial arts. But what we're really trying to espouse is how do you be clever with taking a data problem, breaking it. For example, if you're trying to figure out how to build a, uh, a book recommendation system uh, using LinkedIn data, maybe what you do is you look for the events people are going to and look at some of the, uh, the, the companies that they're at and look for keywords and then you go to a taxonomy database of all the conferences and the interests that are there. And then based from that, what you do is you just do bag of words and combine them. Mm. So you're trying to get very clever, quick learning and get a product out there fast before you do the heavyweight, build a classifier, build an information retrieval system and try to do it all in real time. We're espousing the quick, dirty, clever approach. Mm -hmm. And then once you know you have something, start iterating, get better, right. get refining. So I'm not saying get rid of the traditional, very heavyweight stuff, just know when to build it. I build see. quick, dirty, because you'll get stuff out there, it'll start going, and then you'll learn. Do you see this as an extension of agile development? I mean, it sounds like it plugs directly into that. It is, it, it, in fact, it is. Except here's the difference, with agile development, I think a lot of times, with, with how do you combine agile with algorithms? So for example, mm. take your QA process. Normally when you build a data product, you QA and it looks great. But when you, how do you QA data? How do you QA relevancy of a recommendation that goes wrong? Right. There has to be a whole nother approach to this. And so what you're testing here is, like, when we were building uh, LinkedIn groups you might like, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden groups might recommend religious groups or political groups. Well, we didn't realize that there's these even groups in the system. So what you're doing is you're building lightweight ways and you're testing it lightly and then you realize, oh wow, we actually have all these edge cases. And then you're able to hone it into this, this other form of, of steady stream development, which might more look like a traditional agile process. Okay, now how does it apply to data science teams? I mean, does it sort of empower them to test and to iterate? Is that, is that the key? In fact, that's the, this is why we came up with it, is if you're a data science team and you should and want the responsibility to go build a product, well, what's the framework for going and doing this? Mm. Our framework for actually building and putting products that are in front of people, that people are going to interact with every day, that approach for anybody that's doing this has to be one where you're able to get stuff out there, try it, figure out, and then learn, and then steadily increase your sophistication of the products that you're building over time. I see. So last question for you, and expanding the scope of this a little bit. Is every product a data product these days? And is there actually a bit of a danger in people kind of co-opting that mm -hmm. phrase and applying it incorrectly? Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a fascinating question to ask, what is a data product? I mean, us as humans are a data product. Sure, we, right. we take information in, we process it, we take actions. Uh, the cars, the Google cars, that's a data product. Sure. Uh, the Mars rover is a data product. So I think we, we need to start thinking more expansively about what a data product is. I think every product needs to use data, whether it's just accurate monitoring, learning, the system's taking care of itself to, to not fail, to mm -hmm. not suck. That's an aspect where it may have data. But just like every product has user experience, design, sure. there's no reason why there shouldn't be a component that's data. At the same time, there's products that are going to be very data-driven, a recommendation engine, maybe the, the, like the thermostat, like the Nest system. Mm -hmm or something like the Mars rover. It, but there's no, I don't think we have to, it doesn't have to be an either or, there's a question of how do we find the balance. And I think what I like seeing where people are driving very hard and aggressively to say this is a data product is they're trying to learn it and we'll f we're figuring it out. You know, it's pretty wild to think that this is only the second, it's one year anniversary yeah, of Strata. Right, right. And how much people have changed in the way they think about data mm. products and building whether it's data science team, whether it's doing analysis, that combination is, is really, what we're doing is we're up-leveling the entire sophistication of the data community. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. Always a pleasure.